All right, really excited about this next conversation here on GCR. Coming up this Friday night in College Park, uh, there's going to be a screening, Q&A, and meet and greet of the f with the, for the film All I Ever Wanted, which is a story about love, frankly, um, and the story about persistence. And it's a story about one of our favorite athletes ever in this area. Um, joined now here on the program by both Maryland basketball legend Gravis Vasquez and the man behind, the filmmaker of All I Ever Wanted, Carlos Beltran, is with us as well. Uh, Gravis, I'm going to start with you. Uh, it, it is so good to see you, my friend. It's so great to chat with you. Thank you, as always, for taking the time for us. Oh, th thank you for having us. Uh, I'm excited about this interview. I'm excited about going back to school. Uh, being back in College Park is always something that, I, that means a lot to me. So happy to be here, man. Thank you. You're always supporting me. Man, you're the Thank best. You. You're, you are the best, brother. I, I, Carlos, are you prepared, by the way, for the fact that, like, Gravis truly is the king? Like, when he comes back to College Park, <laughs> he, the city, the entire state stops for this man. That's I've how heard, beloved I've heard, he I've heard that he's an icon, both in <laughs> Venezuela and in Maryland. So, you know. There's, uh, no, doubt, there's no doubt about it. Uh, uh, Carlos, first of all, it's, it's great to meet you, and I had the chance to chat with you a little bit. Uh, I got to watch the film the first time uh, a couple of months back. I, I wonder if you could, but before I get to Gravis and why he wanted to be a part of this, how did this come about for you as a filmmaker? This project, um, I know there's a Venezuelan connection here that's pretty special, but how did it come about for you, and why was it something that you were interested in doing? So I think uh, what's interesting is that I had, of course, as a Venezuelan and as a fan of sports, I had heard of Gravis. Uh, he was, the, of course, the third Venezuelan to ever make it to the NBA um, back in 2010. So I had followed his uh, career. So I had known about him. We have close circle of friends as well. Um, by the time 2016 or so before we started this, I think Gravis had heard of me and my work. So he actually watched some of my stuff. And that's it. He invited me over. We were both living in New York. He was still playing for the Nets. I was living in Brooklyn. Um, and we met up for coffee. He said, hey, I'm planning on doing this. I think you'd be great to document my journey. Uh, I had At the time, I had no idea what his journey would be, hmm. how long it would it take. Um, but uh, that, that was really what sparked. I knew that if I had the access to tell his story, a story that at the time I thought it'd be a comeback, your typical comeback story. You know, you run into something, you have a challenge, you overcome it. Uh, then I thought, hey, with access to this incredible subject at the time I thought of him as, uh, sure, let's give let's give it a go. And as soon as he told me, fine, you can put a camera on me <laughs> uh, for as long as you want. Uh, I'll give you access to it. That's what really what made me want to tell this uh this story. It proved to be a far more complicated story, obviously, uh, as everybody will learn. Gravis, why was it something that you were interested in doing? And, and I'll just start from the get-go, because then I want to talk about how the story unfolded. But why did you say, this is something that I think we could turn into a, a documentary? Well, it was more so about, you know, a message, a strong message, and an and inspirational, inspirational message. Uh, and also, you know, for my culture, I think uh, the Latin culture is so important to me, the youth and the next generation. But with that being said, um, I wanted I wanted people I wanted people to to uh, to find out what happened with me in my career. I mean, I'm out of the NBA nowadays because of an injury, and what I went through was pretty was pretty much depressing. It was it was really hard. Mm -hmm. You know how hard I worked, my passion, and how much I love basketball. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm not able to play basketball. So the message is clear. I'm more than a basketball player. And 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 I'm a father. Um, I'm a son. Uh, I'm an uncle. So it's important to have perspective and, and understand that, you know, life is more than scoring a three-point shot or, or dunking on someone. It's about being human being and, and representing the culture. So it's, it's, it's important to me and for Carlos, I mean, also the Venezuelan connection. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, I, thought, I, I thought Carlos directed the whole uh, film uh, in a high level. Uh, he's one of the best in the business and also reflects how great we are. The Venezuelan culture is, you know what I mean? That, that is important to, to reflect, to showcase. 
uh, I'm so proud to be from Venezuela. Uh, I love my people. Even though we go through a lot, it's important uh, to understand that, you know, we, we got to offer the youth, spe uh, specifically the, the, the Latin American culture, we have to offer this youth the, the platform. And and then in this film, on this film, you're going to be seeing Kevin Durant, yep. Kyle Lowry, Mano Ginobili, idols. I mean, these guys are very important, not for one culture, for the whole world. So the message is really strong. I think we're going to have success. And I want my whole Maryland family to hang out with me on Friday night, 6 p.m. at the Hove Theater. It's going to be fun, man. It's, 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 it's really special to me, especially because, you know, Maryland always have a special, has a special place in my heart. And what I went through my whole college career uh, was awesome. And, and being back, hanging out with my people, with my fans, everyone that supported me, still supports me, is important. And to share this film, it just means a lot. It's a free event on Friday night, but you need to RSVP. We're going to link up on our Twitter account, at Glenn Clark Radio, a link for you to be able to RSVP for this event on Friday night, the Hoff Theater inside the Stamp Student Union. And again, it's a screening of All I Ever Wanted, as well as a Q&A and a meet and greet. Gravis Vasquez, Carlos Beltran are with us. Gravis, if I could follow up on what you just said, though, because and we know you're an emotional person, like you wear your heart on your sleeve. It's one of the things that we loved about watching you play is seeing that emotion come out. It's one of that relationship that you had with Gary was so special because you were both emotional guys. Um, but there's a difference between emotion and vulnerability. And in this film, we see an awful lot of your vulnerabilities. Um, we, we see you in a light that we've probably never seen before. Was it difficult to allow any of that to be on camera, to be put out there for the world to see? You talk about like your relationship, your family, all of those things. Was that difficult for you to do? Well, it, it was. It was difficult, but uh, it was something that I, I wanted to do. Um, and that's one thing that, you know, Carlos was very professional. Um, he, he wanted, he wanted access and, and I gave the access and I wanted the people, my people and the whole world to understand, look, I'm showing that I'm human mm -hmm. and, and this, this can go, this could, this can be a message for like anyone from the age 12 to 17 or either 20 to 40 or any adults, because sometimes you like, you're making millions, you, you, you're being famous, you're traveling the world, you're eating the best food, you're going to the best restaurants. Sometimes you forget, you know, what really matters. And, and, and I made plenty of mistakes, uh, but uh, throughout the film, uh, I can show you my resilience and, 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 my, and how my will imposed my, my character. I'm always, I'm always, every time I wake up, I wake up with purpose. And at that time, I didn't understand my purpose because I wasn't be able to play basketball anymore. And I was making millions playing basketball. Mm -hmm. and, and I built a tremendous platform with basketball. And, 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 and now, well, at that time, I was just trying to figure out. And all of a sudden, like, no, I got to show people, like, I'm a fighter. Like, I'm going to fight back. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get back on the court. And even though I didn't get back on the court, I'm back on the court real. Sure. Real really doing something else, whether it's coaching, whether it's doing a, a, a TV, uh, with mo monumental sports, uh, in the NBA, FIBA basketball. I'm, I'm, I'm an incubator. I love helping. And, and, and that's, that's the side that I'm showing. Like, look, life goes on. You got to continue to work hard. You, and, and, and finally I, I kind of find my purpose and, and I'm so thankful, uh, because and, and Carlos knows it. I mean, it was it was really hard because it's still hard not able to play a game that gave me so much, but it took away a lot too. So I feel like I wanted to show that human side. People, people, you see, like, oh, it was hard for me to come to the United States when I was a, a 17 year old. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I didn't see my family for two years. You know, and and then by the end of my professional career, I had six surgeries on my right ankle. How can you deal with that? How can you deal with the fact that you're ready to sign a contract, a four-year deal with the Brooklyn Nets for $60 million, and you're not able to pass your physical, and you're done? So how can you how can you digest that? So 
that's why this film is very strong because it shows you a message that can help you and help anyone from any culture but also i'm repping my culture which is important uh for all of us especially for me I, I think that's what makes it so powerful. Carlos, you and I were talking a, a little bit beforehand that as much as this is a story about Gravis, and it is, obviously, I, I feel like what made the film so compelling for me was that it really is a story about, to the point, the lengths that someone will go to chase something that they love and their identity. And I do think it will translate, you know, for folks that, that don't aren't necessarily even Maryland basketball fans or Gravis Vasquez fans. That's right. I mean, look, there is no twist and turns that Gravis hasn't mentioned already here. People know that he started as a basketball player and now he's not no longer playing for the NBA. So, But that is not the thick of the story. It's what happened in between. The, the challenges that he faced and how he faced them, right? How his life changed uh, financially, emotionally, socially, professionally, and how he overcame those issues. So like I told you before, Glenn, this is this is never meant to be a promotional video for Gravis, right? But more something that people could relate to, which is why, you know, when we started filming, people would ask me, well, is this really commercially, you know, uh, feasible? Like, is this not like a regional story about a Venezuelan basketball mm -hmm. player? No, I saw it as this is a, un there, there's a universal message over here. Uh, and we've been very lucky to have shown this film and now 29 film festivals this year. It launched premiere earlier in July, and it's been all over the world, from, from the U.S. to India, it's going to be in Italy, and people from all different cultures and backgrounds are able to relate to resilience, uh, to human, you know, just mistakes. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I, I, I truly believe that no matter who you are, you can get something from, from this uh from this film, yeah. Great, Gravis, I thought some of the more powerful scenes in the doc were the footage of you being back in Venezuela, right? And particularly in the aftermath of some very, very difficult things in your country. I remember we would talk a lot about, you know, the joy that came from Venezuelan people seeing you play basketball and how you had an entire country behind you and they were rooting for Maryland. But can you tell us a little bit more about how that pressure impacted you as well, that you meant so much to so many people and your success was so personal for them? Yes, I mean, I, I'll take this uh, very personal. I, I truly believe I have a responsibility. And my responsibility is lead by example. Um, I have a, a generation that look up to me and, and coming from a different country just make you made me uh, if not only hungry but responsible about teaching the guys the guys behind me or the guys that are coming after me especially from my home country how, how to get you know things done the right way you know and, and to me that's important um, just just being someone that I look up to and, and 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 mentoring and helping others is very very important to me and 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 my family understands it and and my kids understand it carlos understands that as well so um i'm really i mean the the film really is really a, 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 an, an important piece of my heart because like i like carlos say it's not a commercial thing for me it's 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 about a, a universal message and 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 the group, the good thing is like I can be in your neighborhood and maybe you watch a film and be like wow man unbelievable if if I can if I can get that if I can change one life through the film and able to you know tell all the stories through Carlos because he directed the film so well then I'm doing my job because it's about that it's about a legacy it's it's more about a, a legacy than making money or or being famous and on, on being commercial because I have a film or documentary. No, it's, it's about like changing the world for better. And, and to me, it's important. That's why I feel responsible, especially in my region. Like if, if you go to uh, South America, it's important to, it's important to me to teach the kids, you know, not only to be basketball players, but to be great human beings. I, and I appreciate that, and I think it's something that you've shown uh, regularly in your life. I, if I could, because Carlos mentioned something about, hey, you know, when the project came to him, he thought it was very simple. You overcome an injury, you get back out on the floor, you're grave as Vasquez, 
you know, it, everybody's happy. That's the, the, the story. That's the finale that everybody wants. I, I feel like in a doc like this, what people want to see at the end is even though things didn't necessarily go the way health wise that you wanted them to go, that what they want to see is that you found peace, that you were able to find a place where I can make peace with everything that I've been through, everything that I've given. And so I, I ask you that question because you and I have never talked about this. Have you been able personally to find peace and to say, this was my story, everything that I went through, for better, for worse, I, I'm at a place where I have found peace because of all of it? Totally, yes. Uh, and uh, at the beginning, it was hard. That's why we, we ended up filming for, the, right. for almost seven or eight years. And, and Carlos, was very, he was very patient. That's why, to me, he's right. He's the best there is. And <laughs> and that's why confidence, even more confident than regularly, because I know this film is going to make a tremendous impact. I'm not only, I, I, don't, I don't only have peace, um, I have a purpose. And, and now I can see it. I can go to sleep. You know, I can see my kids. I, I, I can see my family. And obviously it hurts. It hurts because I, I love basketball. I love, you know, my, my active uh, career as a basketball player. But at the end of the day, life goes on. Now I got I, I to gotta look up to, or I got to look out for my kids, yep. especially my son. You know, he's a soccer player. My daughter, he's a volleyball player, and my and my and the little one is just a a soccer player as well. So, I just trying to teach my kids the right way. And 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 the documentary, it'll be something that will make a tremendous impact to my to my direct family, especially my kids, because my my uh, NBA career, my kids were too young. Sometimes I don't even remember. <laughs> Uh, going to a, a, an NBA basketball game, so um, I'm in peace, man. I'm I'm happy. I'm thankful, and and the best days for myself are yet to come. And 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 I'm looking forward to to what's next, the next chapter, and and, and what I'm going through right now because it hasn't been any easy. Uh, I went through a lot personally. I I, sh I wanted to show the world that look, I'm I, I'm. I'm breakable, but but I'm gonna get you know if I if I go down seven times I'm gonna get up eight, mm -hmm. no matter what. So uh, the resilience and, and and the will to get better each and every day, no matter what, was really 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 important. So um, I'm in peace. I'm, I'm, I and I'm it. excited. I want to see all of you guys on Friday, man. Glenn, you going right? I, brother, I will be for you anything, man. I I would okay. travel the earth for you, my friend. Well, Let's take a picture when we get there. When you there, man. Done. Forget to go. Invite everyone. Carlos, if I Carlos. could. Uh, my last one for you, the challenges of making a doc that almost seemed to never have an end, right? Like, as Gravis alludes to. Like, they, there kept being another part of the story. There kept being another, you know, potential surgery, another. I, what is that like as a filmmaker to never know when to say, or to, to know when to say when, to say, all right, we've told a story. What What is the challenge of that? <laughs> This I can tell you this. Um, I've been a uh, professional, you know, journalist and filmmakers for 15 years or so. This is the hardest thing I ever did. This is my first. I love you, Carlos. I love you. <laughs> yeah. No, this is, but it's not only because of great. I mean, this is. Uh, I mean, this is my fe first feature film, and to do justice to someone's story, right? This is not theme based. This is not a story about something that happened already. This is the journey of a person, right? As they go through many things. So time, time needs to play a part. So time is a bit of a character in this document. So patience was absolutely paramount for me to be able to just get through this. But this film almost died like 17 times throughout the whole thing. I mean, look, it was supposed to take only one year. We're being naive, right? We prepare for maybe a year and a half because Gravis is going to see the best orthopedic surgeons there are. And then he'll be going to be back in the court in about a year, year and a half. Nothing at the one year. At the two-year mark, we had to choose and decide, are we going to keep filming or are we just stopping now? We started with a crew of about 30 people. Uh, and then it over the years, it dwindled down to three. Uh, an editor, a producer, I wore many hats. And then that's how we got it done. We had to stretch every resource that we had over there. So to answer your question, it's extremely difficult. And when you don't know when uh, a film should end, 
you are patiently waiting for a natural end, right? Um, like Gravis said, the best years of his life are not yet here, right? Uh, so we could have potentially kept filming forever, right? So, but at one point we had to come to terms with, okay, we've seen the thick of the story. We've learned a lot from Gravis. At this point, we thought that Gravis had shown 180 degree of change, you know, uh, mm -hmm. as, as a character, you know what I mean? There's some clear change between, you know, how he started and how he is not ending, but where the movie was at that time. Uh, I think this is the right time because we, at, as soon as I heard from Gravis that he had come to terms with whatever he had done, hadn't done the decisions that he made, then I knew, okay, yeah, we, we can learn something from this guy now. Um, and that was, and that was it, you know, and, uh, a lot of, a lot of footage ended up on the editing floor. <laughs> We're talking seven years worth of, worth of filming. Sure. Yeah. So that was, that was the challenge. Let's bring this story concisely, the best bits that we can show, uh, in the course of 95 minutes, hour and a half. Um, you know, so yeah, it was extremely difficult, man. But I, to, to have this under my belt now, I know that professionally speaking, I mean, I can tackle the next, the next project, whatever it is, but I'm so proud to have this uh, story out there. And you have no idea, you haven't asked about this, but Grave has never really watched the film. Wait, really? Until it premiered. Well, he, he, he saw it when it premiered earlier okay. this year, but he kept himself from watching the film there. And that was a huge part. I mean, I, of course, as a filmmaker, I, I, I'm thinking, okay, how, how is the public, how is, how's the audience going to react to this? Are they really going to enjoy it, learn from it, understand what I want? But another thing is for the subject of your film to watch it and feel like justice was made to their story. Uh, and we have a photo that my wife took right after the first screening of the film where Gravis is as happy as he can be. We're hugging. We're happy because of it. And I'm just so looking forward to Gravis watching the film for the second time in Maryland uh, this Friday and uh, hoping that he has a very similar reaction to that. That's really also. cool. Gra Gravis, do you, can, you, can you recreate what, what the feeling was when you got, finally got to watch it? It, it was unbelievable. I, I got really emotional. That's cool, I'm already man. emotional, but uh, I got even more <laughs> emotion. So it was good, man. It was, it, it, you know, it wasn't only feel cool. It just like, wow, I'm doing... I never thought in my life the way I grew up, I, you know, I was going to be en ended up being an NBA player. And now I have, I, I, I'm part of, of the production of the film. And, and now I can tell all the stories through my story. That's huge. So, um, I'm, I'm, I love, I love it, man. I'm, I'm thankful. Like I say, Carlos, I, I couldn't, I couldn't done this with, well, I couldn't do it with anyone better than Carlos. Awesome. Uh, he's a very pro guy best there is and you know, the only the only unfortunate thing was the fact that he went to um, i think kansas university kansas. oh <laughs> oh uh, KU. yeah yeah ku yeah. Oh. And, and unfortunately uh we you know we gotta be a little bit uh, a little bit mean when he when he gets to college park <laughs> now like, but, you know it's part of the family we can, re we can remind him what happened in the uh, 2002 <laughs> Final Four. We can remind oh, him yeah, of that. Oh, yeah, you can remind him about that, you know? Yeah, you can well, remind you'll, you'll know. I already know. No Don't doubt worry, about Gra it. Uh, Gravis, Carlos, congratulations. Um, it really is a beautiful film, and, and I can't wait for everybody to see it again. Friday night inside the Hoff Theater at Stamp Student Union, and we are going to link up on our Twitter account, at Glenn Clark Radio, the RSVP link for you to get your spot. It is a free event, but you do need to RSVP, so we will link that up on our Twitter account, at Glenn Clark Radio. Uh, guys, is there anything I can plug for you about either the film or anything else you have going, else on, uh, going on right now? There's, there's going to be raffles. There's going to be uh, basketball, signed basketball, something awesome. to Jersey, you know. <laughs> free popcorn <laughs> awesome i'm gonna be I, i'm gonna be telling stories about me and gary so <laughs> i want to see, see everyone there they uh they might not always be family friendly will they there might be a little <laughs> might be a little color in those uh, we, we, we don't know we'll see <laughs> uh gravis uh always appreciate it carlos you, uh, really, really enjoyed the film thank you guys for taking the time for it thank you thank, thank you, you.